Once upon a time, Unix developers wanted to run a series of instructions over and over again. They created a shell script, which is basically a file containing instructions for the shell. The only catch is that there are several different shells, and they are each slightly different. Let's try cat slash Etsy shells to see what shells you have. Anything after slash bin slash is the name of a shell. So more about these different shells. Each one has a slightly different syntax, as you can see from these two examples. Now, it may seem subtle, but it's enough to create problems. What we have to do is, at the beginning of the file, start off with a shebang, which is a sharp and an exclamation mark, and then the path of what shell you are using to interpret this script. In this example, and in all of our scripts, we will be using TCSH. Let's get started with some code examples. First, let's copy the files using the Unix CP command. Before we do that, we'll want to change into our CS330 directory, and then the labs directory. Then we'll want to make a directory for the current lab. In this example, it's lab 3, but it might change in a different semester. We will change into that new directory and then use the copy command to copy some files into that directory. I am typing the first couple of characters of the path and then hitting the tab key to autocomplete. At the end, the star.sh means all the files that end in .sh. And the dot at the end means your current directory. So we're copying all the files from that big long path into your current directory. You should now have 10 files that end in .sh. Our next step is to make the scripts executable. When we do a long listing to see the permissions, notice how the files do not have an X, which means they don't have any execute permissions. After we do the chmod plus X star dot sh for all the files, notice that there is an X for the owner. This means that the owner can now execute these files. Our last step is to execute or run the script. To do that, we simply type the name of the file. People.sh does a long listing, makes a directory called tom, changes into the tom directory, and then touches or creates three files. To run the file, we will type dot slash people.sh. It will execute all of the commands inside. The dot slash is to ensure that we are running the file in our current directory. We can double check that it's worked by using the ls command with the tom directory to see what's inside. It looks like this script has worked. We successfully ran a basic shell script. In future video presentations, we're going to take a look at variables and control structures.